So this topic we're about to do now is a little bit different than the rest of them, um, but it is still quite important, okay? So it's still trigonometry. We're gonna look at the graphs of sine, cos, and tan, okay? So you can graph them out. Uh, so you can see here that sine gets this wave. It's called a sine wave, okay? Um, and you can see it here. It just keeps going on and on and on. So if we were to extend this x-axis along, these are two separate graphs, by the way, it'd keep going on and on and on and on forever the exact same way, okay? So there's a couple of important points about the sine graph. So I'll scroll down a tiny bit. So the first point is that sine of zero is equal to zero, yeah? So if you put that into your calculator, that means that uh, it goes through the origin, okay? So it starts at zero, zero, yeah? And um, also we'll say the maximum point is equal to one, yeah? So here you can see it's equal to one and here's equal to one, that's at 90 degrees or in radians pi over two. Uh, the minimum point is minus one and that is at 270 degrees or three pi over two and then um, it repeats itself so repeats itself every 360 degrees yeah so you see there it goes up down and then back up and then it's going to start again it's going to do the exact same thing every 360 degrees uh, without fail so every 360 degrees or every two pi radians, so it depends if you're measuring radians or degrees, um, but they, they mean the same thing really anyway. Uh, they're still just a measure of angle, okay? So it starts at zero, the maximum point is one, the minimum point is minus one, repeats itself every 360 degrees or two pi, and that's called its period, okay? So the period of sine x is 360 degrees or two pi. So I'm just gonna write that uh, in this form here. I'm gonna write the range is minus one and one. So that means the maximum point is one, the minimum point is minus one, and the period equals 360 degrees or two pi, okay? So those are the two most important ones, okay? That's, that's about sine x. Um, and the way we get this graph is just if you put in, so every number from one, two, three, four, five, six, all the way up to 360, you'll find all these dots and then just connecting the dots. So you just keep doing that over and over again. So hopefully that makes sense. It's not, uh, it's a little bit abstract, a little bit different, but uh, you just really need to know this, that it's minus one, one, and the period is 360 degrees or two pi. You have to get kind of comfortable with them because they can ask questions about these sort of graphs, okay? So we'll move on, and then we're gonna look at the cause graph, okay? So cause graph is, is very similar. Uh, it still is a wave, except if you look at it here, it's a bit different. So the sine graph goes through the origin, the cause graph starts at one up here, okay? So the cause graph, after that it becomes kind of the same wavy thing, but it hits the x-axis at different points, yeah? So here it hits the x-axis at 90, and the lowest point is at 180, 270, and then again, it repeats itself here. So I'm gonna do this in orange. I'm not gonna write the same points out, but it's all, uh, they're, they're quite similar. So cause of zero is equal to one. I'm gonna say that's its starting point. Um, does it technically doesn't really start anywhere? It just kind of keeps going. But anyway, let's call it the starting point. And then I'm going to say the range again is minus one to one, so it's similar to a sine in that. And the period is the same uh, that it repeats itself every so 360 degrees or two pi. Yeah, so it repeats itself every 360 degrees. I'll scroll up a little bit, or every two pi radians, yeah? So hopefully you see the difference there between cos and sine, it's just kinda shifted to the right or to the left of it. If you move, say this point here, over to O, then it'll look like a sine graph, but the cos graph starts at one, goes up and down like that, okay? Um, yeah, again, hopefully that's clear. It's again, just by putting each number of these into, so one degree, two degree, three degree, four degree, all into cos of x, and see what the calculator says, plotting them all, uh, and you get this graph here, okay? And um, yeah, again, just try to be a little bit comfortable with those. And the last one then is tan is a bit weird. It's quite different from the other ones. So um, tan x, there is a line kind of extending down like that. They all look like this one here in the middle. Okay. Um, yeah, that's that. That's the tan graph. Really. There's not much else you can say about it. It's a bit weird. So these lines here, these dotted lines, they're called, I'll use green, um, asymptotes, okay? Asymptotes, that's kind of a weird word, but it basically just means a line 
that the graph will never touch. Okay, so the graph will get really, really, really close, but it can never ever touch this line here. So it'll get like the further up we go, the closer it'll get, but it'll never touch it. Okay, so that's important that at 90 degrees, the graph of tan x is um, it doesn't exist. Okay, yeah, so it's not not available NA. Um, yeah, and then so okay, I'm just gonna have to scroll over here to uh, look at this graph here. So the points for tan, I'll do in purple. So the range for tan uh, is a little bit different. It's from minus infinity to infinity. Okay, they won't really ask you that at all, but it just means that it, it keeps going down forever and it keeps going up forever. It doesn't ever really stop. And then the period, this is the one that you do have to know. The range isn't so important is equal to 180 degrees or pi radians. Okay, that's the important bit. That instead of like the other ones, they repeat every 360 degrees or two pi radians. Tan repeats every pi radian, so 180 degrees. You see there that it repeats itself every 180 degrees. And this kind of tan graph isn't as good. Uh, sorry, the radian graph isn't as good, but it still shows there it hits the x-axis at pi, at zero, at minus pi, at two pi. Um, yeah. Okay, so hopefully that bit makes sense. That's kind of, you just need to be comfortable with those. Um, yeah, you need to be comfortable with those. You need to, uh, more so with sine and cos, they're gonna be more important. They'll come up more often. Uh, but you still need to know tan as well. And then also, I'll just scroll over. You need to, so I'll just go orange. Um, you need to be able to draw them, okay? Be able to draw. So it sounds quite complicated, but all you need to know is where they hit the x-axis, where they start, the top and the bottom point, and then their period. And then you should be able to just draw the wavy form. It doesn't have to be perfect in the exam, you just have to draw uh, a rough wave, make sure it hits all those points, and then you'll be okay. So you should be able to draw, sine, cos, and tan. Okay, so again, not super accurately, as long as you know all the points where it hits the x-axis and its minimum and maximum points, you should be able to draw graphs of sine, cos, and tan, and um, okay. But yeah, hopefully that video made sense. Um, yeah, we'll see you next time. We're gonna talk more about uh, the graphs of sine, cos, and tan. So it's a little bit weird, but anyway.